A derecho event is possible in the Midwest today, and in this video, we're going to look at the environment that could contribute to this. This is the latest day one outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. A moderate risk has been introduced across Wisconsin, and this is likely going to be the focal point for severe weather today. So let's get into this environment and see what's going on. We're looking at mid-level lapse rates in this particular image. This is based on the NAM model, by the way. And we see very steep mid-level lapse rates are coming into this, uh, into the Midwest, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. We've got values of seven to eight, perhaps 8.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. And in addition, if you go into the low levels, which this model is not showing here, but I'm going to just draw it on, we've got a zone of very moist air surface dew points that could reach into the mid to upper 70s even in this pool that extends over a lot of the Midwest like I said Iowa Michigan Indiana and Wisconsin and Minnesota which are some key places so when you combine the those two things you've got steep lapse rates and you got moist air and you've got regions of dry air aloft even with this elevated mixed layer, you get surface base cape that is quite high, and that's exactly what the NAM is showing right here. This is into the afternoon, 00Z, from eastern central Minnesota down to Iowa, northern Illinois, and Wisconsin in particular here. We've got very large buoyancy. We've got surface base cape exceeding 4,000 joules per kilogram. That is quite high and is very favorable for intense convective updrafts and also will feed a developing storm cluster as we progress into the evening because this moist and uh, unstable air mass is going to be in the inflow side of the storm. Now, if we look at this environment here, uh, this is the 500 millibar chart and I want you to notice, I'm going to draw it on here, this large area of high pressure aloft, drawing it right here with an H, that is something that we see a lot of times in the summertime produce a northwest flow regime. And what's that? That's right here where we've got northwesterlies aloft. And that could lead to organized MCSs. We've seen it in the past. Like I said, it's a summertime thing. And with that, you get these embedded speed maxima as we're going to be seeing right into, whoops, right into there. In the afternoon hours, really intensifying over northern Minnesota and into Wisconsin. That's going to lead to enhanced wind shear, upper level dynamics. You've got this, the actual speed max right here. Downstream, your uh, height contours are starting to diverge. You've got some defluence, some upper dynamics to support convection and help initiate it. But in addition, with that enhanced flow coming in, we're going to be seeing effective bulk shear through the evening late afternoon and through the evening and early overnight hours even it's very strong from this part of minnesota through wisconsin to northern illinois northern indiana perhaps even parts of michigan we have effective bulk shear that is over 40 knots and in wisconsin in particular we have values that could exceed 50 or even 60 knots and the same goes for the fixed zero to six kilometer shear values so very strong vertical wind shear combined with significant low level instability and we're going to be looking at the low-level wind shear. This is 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative velocity, also based on the NAM. So we head into the afternoon. We have values that are already starting to elevate. And then as we head into the evening, they're becoming even more elevated right in through here. And this might be influenced by convection some, so this might be contaminated a little bit, particularly the sounding we're going to be looking at here in a moment. It's contaminated a little bit, so these values might not get exactly this high, but still, the point is, as we have 850 millibar flow that amplifies to about 40 knots in this region, at around this time frame, coincident with boundary layer decoupling, we're going to be seeing amplifying low-level flow, uh, or enlarged low-level photographs, and that leads to stronger storm relative velocity. So let's look at the sounding, and we'll see what that looks like. This is also from the NAM, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, one thing that I really should point out here is ignore the possible hazard type because it says none and obviously this is an unstable and strong, strongly sheared environment so it is irrelevant to this. So just ignore that and let's look at some of the other things. First of all, large positive area 
as seen right in through here, that is contributing significantly to uh, convective potential. Also, I want to point out some things right in through here. I've noticed layers of dry air in the mid and low levels of the atmosphere, not quite at the surface, but a little bit aloft, and that's going to be helping to increase the uh, downdraft intensity with some of these thunderstorms, perhaps lead to some evaporative cooling. And that is going to be one of the reasons why we have such significant instability, particularly when it comes to uh, surface parcels and downdraft cape, which is right down here. Also, because, as I mentioned earlier, I think this is a little bit contaminated, perhaps, in some areas, uh, the NAM is kind of overdoing it on the STP. I don't think that it will be 14, but uh, certainly elevated values of certain parameters. Uh, right in through here, I want you to notice this wind profile from the surface up to 500 millibars and higher. We've got very strong directional shear. We've got very strong speed shear. And that is indicative of the strong vertical shear environment that is going to be leading to organized storms and also supports a little bit of an elongated hoodograph up here which has been seen in many other models and is something that we're probably going to be seeing in the evening and that's not going to contribute to this widespread supercell potential like you might normally associate it with but still is going to play a big role in this which we will discuss momentarily but if you look down here in the corner you've got downdraft cape that is almost 1500 joules it only has to be a thousand for you to start getting significant wind, yes. So that is quite high. Um, MCS maintenance parameter is almost 100%, and significant severe weather parameter is almost uh, 36,000, when it only needs to be 20,000 for significant severe weather. So what these parameters down here tell us is that the environment is conducive to significant severe weather, and we're gonna be looking at simulated reflectivity right now. This is the simulated re reflectivity based on the HRW, WRF, ARW model, if you want to go into the actual letters of it. And we're looking at that because I think it displays the convective uh, evolution more accurately than I have seen from some others. Uh, something important to note as we head into the afternoon, this does not show the whole picture, so northern northeastern minnesota we've got convection going on and it's probably going to be supercellular because this is the initial development going on but as we head into the afternoon as we head into the evening hours we start to see this compact mcs develop this could be a progressive derecho perhaps moving through the state of wisconsin we see very well organized bowing structure very large and intense storm high reflectivities this is going to be diving southward, and as it encounters some weaker instability and increasing inhibition later in the evening, it will probably have a tendency to weaken. So, you will probably have isolated severe wind gusts once you get into northern Indiana, Illinois, perhaps some per, uh, persisting into central Min uh, Michigan, and also northern Ohio, but it's not going to be as widespread and significant as earlier. But I want to mention something. I mentioned how the hoodographs are going to play a role. We will have very strong wind shear downstream from this in the low levels, right in through here in particular. Now, that's not going to lead to widespread supercells, as I mentioned, but it does increase the potential for embedded supercellular structures and mesovortices along the leading edge of the MCS. That could lead to tornadoes. Also, in a strong level wind shear environment, we could get embedded uh, dynamic structures within the MCS itself, which could include structures producing rear inflow jets. Those are very strong currents of air bringing strong gusts down to the surface and are one of the criteria for uh, a derecho because it has to have these sustained organized structures. And so this low level wind shear is leading to substantial storm organization in the sense that we could get tornadoes and significant damaging wind gusts, perhaps exceeding 75 miles per hour in some cases. So this has been a severe weather analysis, a severe weather briefing for July 28th, 2021.